Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to take some new wire and some new connectors, and we're going to make a new aircraft battery cable. We're also going to make a couple of cables for the aux power port, but those are the solid copper connectors we're going to be using. And there's the um, heat shrink tubing we'll use to keep everything weather type in the engine compartment. So stand by while we have some fun. So we would like to ask you, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Well, as you know from the title, we're making a battery cable today, and there's our pieces all laid out. We have a 14, a 28, a 43, and two 29s. Those are the five cables for the 79 Tiger if you have an aux port. Now, the cable is all made to mill spec. It's Tefcel. Um, there's your spec, 22759 stroke 16, if you're curious about that. But we have the cable. We got it in white, and we also got a bunch of the solid number two battery connectors, and those are five 16th inch holes for going on the relays and the starter and everything else that this will connect up to including the battery so now we're going to start making the cables but here we have our uh, heat gun that we're going to use with the heat shrink tubing and then it doesn't have to be fancy they do make swedgers that you can put underneath and blow with a hammer on a hard floor and they will drive the connection onto the cable end but this is a hydraulic harbor freight wasn't all that expensive especially when you had a coupon for it but again it's a hydraulic swedger and we've already got it set up for the number two cable now that's what the old one looks like with the fiber wrapping on it we label both ends to make sure that the new one is made it conforms well then you cut the end off now the trick here is to cut light enough to score the Teflon but not enough to start breaking strands you don't want to break any strands and then you want to kind of leave it oriented like that then we're going to cut the end off and unpeel it and then we're going to go ahead and tap on a new connector and at this point we're now ready to hydraulically swedge that onto the end and there it is all set up for the number two now it's a lot easier if this is being held uh, you're not doing it with two hands and the cable and operating the handle but you can work it all out and there it is all swedged on the end and now we're ready to go ahead and put a piece of heat shrink tubing on it now this is just standard heat shrink tubing and that is a heat gun set on high which is the number two setting it's not a very powerful heat gun it's not the big blue harbor freight one we have that could literally cook a hot dog in about 30 seconds but anyway you take your time and you slowly heat all the heat shrink tubing it shrinks onto the cable and this forms a good weather union between the copper head now we go down the slide um, where it goes towards the hole in the uh, connector but at the same time we go about an inch or so past on the other end that we can I'm sorry two inches past on the other end so that we can get a good weather shield all along that section where it adheres to the cable after it's all been shrunk into place so again not hard to do um, Radio Shack used to sell solder that work with matches and you could use a match to heat this you could also use a Bic lighter but a heat gun gun is so much nicer so anyway after it's been scored around very carefully you roll it on a hard surface uh, you don't again you don't want to cut down and break a strand and then you score a slit towards the same direction as the cable runs and now you're ready to go ahead and get the end completely off all the time not cutting any strands um, broken strands don't do you any good through the whole cable um, certainly doesn't help the cable but by being cut there even if it's going to be covered with heat shrink it's not going to really do any long-term damage to the cable but as trying to be a good craftsman we try to make them all as best as we can then we slide the connector on and you'll see it stops right before it gets to the teflon and then we're going to pick up something with some weight and we're going to tap 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 it right onto the end of the cable to make sure that we have a good connection and then we're going to put it into the uh, hydraulic swedger now the trick here is is to hold it all very stable while you're getting ready to swedge it. Uh, once you get some pressure on it, it's not going to move around a lot in the tool and you can use both hands just to pump it up. But then the heat shrink tubing will slide over. We're using a almost a half inch diameter heat shrink and it goes over the almost a third of an inch cable and the connector gives you room to move over everything and we're using the rounded connectors not the square ones on the end with the 516 holes for the battery and the uh, relays and all but then again you just heat it and it will shrink and it will adhere to it so nothing very exciting here i'm going to go ahead and throw this into a little bit of fast forward and probably cut it here too but anyway it shrinks up fairly nicely 
Now that you've got the heat shrink tubing in it, now you want to inspect it really quickly to make sure everything looks right. There's no tears in it. You can heat it enough that it will deform and tear itself. So and you also want to make sure that it's all clocked appropriately. Now the tricky wicket here on this cable is you take a good sharp razor knife and then you try to roll the cable on a tile or in this case a laboratory flame proof surface. And you're just trying to score down. You don't ever want to feel you're hitting the cable. And then when you get it rolled like that several times, that way you can control the pressure and you can feel it cutting into the uh, Teflon. When you get it all done, now you come back and you guide it right to where you cut and then right to the end to get a good score all the way out. Now that's not going to affect the strands because they are going to move out of your way when you're going that direction. But look at this. Now you'll be able to peel it. Uh, that is once you cut it all the way through. Sorry about that, folks. But um, you find your spot again with the razor blade to find your cut so you're not making a second cut and um, then you get it all open and then you can now just peel it off um, you didn't cut all the way through so it's not going to spin off you can get a score line if you've got some cable cutters and ours are unfortunately very dull and we had quite the time cutting these five pieces but if you've got good sharp ones then you can hold them in that and rotate the cable and it could put a good score line in it that you can use and then you'll come back with a razor knife like this and just go ahead and cut and peel the end off so if you're making five cables each with two ends uh, you're in for about times 10 on this process not hard to do but again cut a couple of strands don't get everything quite right forget the heat shrink tubing that battery cable is still going to last a long time but we'd like to la have it last at least as long as the original which is what 45 years so They've been on the airplane a long time, maybe 50 years if you've got a two-seater or 60 or more. But anyway, make them good. And again, the heat shrink does it. It keeps the weather out of wicking into the cable strands. And that tends to let moisture in. And when you have moisture getting in, then you get a potential for corrosion. And once the corrosion starts, you're never going to get out. Now, this is 10 plated copper wire so the tin's not going to corrode like aluminum wood or copper wood but again uh, you get what you pay for here we are tapping the connector onto the very end of it and what that does is the cables after you cut them they're not perfectly round anymore so we took a pair of pliers and we made them round on the end and then after we removed the piece that we needed on the end to get the connector on and when we're tapping it on like that uh, we'd like to have the jacket right up to the very bottom of the connector and at the same time those st strands will flow into the connector as you're tapping so that when you get a good crimp on the outside you're going to have a good solid mechanical connection and then as a final check not shown on camera but if you've got a bolt in the wall these can be put on there and you can attach a 25 pound weight and let it drop a couple of inches if those cables stay together go put them on the airplane and so by the way they passed muster but it's a good strong mechanical connection and it's um, easy at first with the hydraulics but then you can truly deform that and that's why you want to make very sure that when that connector is put into the jaws of that connector after being clocked and everything properly against the other connector the first one's not an issue because there's no clocking involved when there's just one but you get the second one right you want to make sure it's in there so you can distort that and you can put a tab out to one side and I have seen people on purpose get the cable in the center and swedge it out to the side to make a tab because they needed to hold a bolt or another stack of connectors and they were doing that to save um, some effort on their part but it was a customized solution and not how you normally do that so it doesn't look like a whole lot of fun and right now I've got uh, sparkle um, video taking this and you get it down to a good store until you're seeing the deformation in the connector and then at that point you can release the hydraulic pressure on it and you can take it apart and get ready for the next one now if you're going to be really efficient at this you could cut all the five cables at one time which we did get all the connectors organized which we did but we didn't strip all the ends so we didn't put them all on and swedge them all in one fell swoop and then come back with the connectors we did them one at a time um, as a way because it was a learning session here at the hangar day because I know how to put these cables together uh, I doubt Luann will ever put one together shop monkey knows how to do one now um, he's not doing one he's off camera right now playing with the puppy but um, we'll talk about that later but anyway we made these all up and they're for the project tiger and again there are five cables now the Grumman Pilots Association is going to have 
uh, electrical cables made out of number two cable with these copper ends with the um, heat shrink on them. We're going to make the three set up for the battery positive, battery ground, and the starter. And then we're going to make a setup for the aux power port. So order what you need. But if you've got a aux power port, you're going to need both sets of cables. Again, it's kind of fun when you watch this. I watched some heat shrink tubing at a demonstration at Sun and Fun where they fixed somebody's sunglasses by putting two layers of this on the broken sunglass uh, leg between the uh, ear and the front piece. Uh, it was about in the middle, and they just went ahead and did it with the uh, heat shrink tubing. Didn't look all that great, but the guy didn't need to buy another pair of glasses. Of course, I guess today at Sun and Fun or Oshkosh, there are eyeglass vendors that probably have, um, you know, shops you can walk right into. But anyway, here we are just finishing up that on that uh, heat shrink tubing. And again, you don't want to get it too hot. And as Matt will tell you, you want to make sure that that stainless steel tip on the heat gun doesn't touch anything plastic or meltable when it goes down. Now, here's an alternate view. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Lou Ann again for this one. Uh, Lou Ann and I are just having fun in the hangar watching me make cables. And it was nice to be able to get out to the hangar today and get some real work done on the Project Tiger. We are going to be um, calling the engine shop tonight. Um, he has been waiting for his new six cylinder electronic tack to come in. And we're going to be putting it on a four cylinder, which it will do four or six. But. Um, he hasn't run our engine yet because we've been waiting for his tack. Now, we could tell him, oh, don't worry about the tachometer. Go ahead and do it without. But we're going to go ahead and wait for the tachometer. And then we'll have our engine run. And then becomes the real fun part. But Matt and I got today, and there'll be a video on this on hangar flying, that, um, and Dave Hall helped as well being in and out of the airplane. We replaced the master and the starter relays to go along with all these new cables. We did the fuel pump and we rehung the battery box after painting and cleaning everything up on it on the firewall. So now we are just in the final stages of going to run a new alternator wire and then get the engine back from the shop and we'll be hanging it. But here we go back to cables. So in a nutshell, that's about how you make an aircraft battery cable. Now, th there's a quick shot of the tools I used. But anyway, and then no job is really complete until you see the results of your action. And so here we are trying it on the airplane. So those new cables are being hung. This one is being hung on the starter relay because it's going to go to the starter and it's a 43 inch long cable but you know it's nice when you can make up a cable like that and then you can see the effects of your work when you put it on the aircraft and then you want to check to make sure the clocking position is right all new hardware and then you'll come with a wrench and we'll make it all tight but anyway it's a great satisfaction to everyone now I'd like to thank everybody who helped with this today uh, we had Dave Hall we had Luann, we had Shop Monkey, and we had myself all playing with making cables and being camera crew and all today. So it was a good fun day in the hangar. It was nice that the weather is still mild enough that we can open the door and have good lighting. And um, it worked out well with that because, you know, now everybody knows how to make a battery cable, uh, not just me. And so there they are just hanging there waiting for the battery tray and all to come back in. And um, we had a visitor today. Uh, that is Lucy. That is Matt and Lynn's new border collar puppy. So ladies and gentlemen, we hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. You know, forget buying expensive toys for your kittens and cats. Um, we find that just taking the aircraft spruce box and the paper on the tile floor is more than enough amusement for them for hours.